In this module, we are going to learn optimum tariffs and welfare effects of tariff. We analyzed so far that there is general consensus that tariffs will improve the country's terms of trade or in the limiting case, leave them unchanged. Now the question is how far a country can go on raising the tariffs and improving its terms of trade so that it can maximize the level of its economic welfare. So in this module, we will study the theory of optimum tariff and the welfare effects of tariff. After starting this module, you shall be able to understand the concept of optimum tariff, learn how the optimum tariff is calculated and analyzed, analyze factors which result in the shift of foreign country offer curve, study the welfare effects of tariff in a small country and large country. We will begin this module by discussing theory of optimum tariffs. A large nation can improve its terms of trade by imposing tariffs on imports. However, a tariff causes the volume of imports to decrease which lessens the nation's welfare by reducing its consumption of low-cost imports. There is thus a gain due to improved terms of trade and a loss due to reduced import volume. A nation optimizes its economic welfare by imposing a tariff rate at which the positive difference between the gain of improving terms of trade and the loss of declining import volume is maximized. According to the theory of optimum tariffs, a country can go on increasing the tariffs and bring about improvement in its terms of trade and economic welfare until it reaches a point of tangency between its own highest trade indifference curve and the foreign country's offer curve. In other words, a country can maximize its level of economic welfare by optimizing rather than maximizing its terms of trade. This is the point of optimum tariff which is achieved when the nation reaches a point of tangency between its own trade indifference curve and the foreign country's offer curve. Let us illustrate the optimum tariff. Assume that there are two nations and the two commodities. The two nations are nation 1 and nation 2 and two commodities are commodity X and commodity Y. As assumed nation 1 exportable good is X which is nation 2 importable good and its importable good is Y which is nation 2 exportable good. Nation 1 is a home country which is also the tariff imposing country as shown in figure OA is the offer curve of nation 1 home country and OB is the offer curve of nation 2 foreign country. In the absence of tariffs, the two nations free trade offer curves intersect each other at point Q where the terms of trade are given by the line OT. The point Q as shown is the free trade equilibrium position for the two nations. The set of trade indifference curves represented by U1, U2, U3 are nation 1 curves which are parallel to each other. It depicts that as nation 1 moves from a lower to higher trade indifference curve that is from U1 to U2 to U3 its economic welfare goes on increasing continuously. Starting with the initial free trade equilibrium point at Q where U1 also passes through the tariff imposition by nation 1 will shift nation's offer curve to the left that is from OA to OA1. The tariff displaced offer curve OA1 intersects nation 2 offers curve at point R where the new trade equilibrium is now established. In the figure, the new terms of trade line is not drawn to avoid so much of lines. This line will be steeper than the free terms of trade line OT. At point R, the nation has moved to the higher indifference curve U2. Whereas point Q lies in the lower indifference curve U1. This implies that in moving from Q to R through the action of tariffs, nation 1 has improved its terms of trade 
and as well as its level of economic welfare. Now again, if nation 1 imposes tariff, then its offer curve moves further to OA2. The new trade equilibrium position is at point H. The movement from R to H raises the tariff and nation 1 improves its terms of trade and the welfare as the movement of indifference curve from U2 to U3. At point H, nation 1 has reached a point of tangency between its highest trade indifference curve U3 and foreign countries offer curve OB. So, point H is the point of optimum tariff, that is the level at which nation 1 has achieved its highest level of economic welfare through tariff action. Now the question arises, what would happen if nation 1 continued increasing its tariff beyond the point H? By doing so, the nation is going to reduce its welfare. By further increasing the tariffs, nation 1 shifts its offer curve from OA2 to OA3. This causes trade equilibrium position to shift from point H to S. At point S, the terms of trade are better for nation 1 than they were at point H. But S lies on the lower trade indifference curve U2 as compared to H which lies on the higher trade indifference curve U3. Therefore, the movement from point H to S is a movement in the downward direction in terms of economic welfare. Both S and R lie on the same lower indifference curve. Since H was better than R, it implies that it is better than S as well. So, with further increase in the tariffs, the level of economic welfare will be reduced. The optimum tariff point is point H and until this point is reached, nation 1 can raising tariff as it will result in the improvement in terms of trade as well as in terms of economic welfare of the country. Beyond that point, nation can increase the amount of tariff, but the result would be decrease in economic welfare despite of improvements in the terms of Next, we will discuss factors affecting shift in foreign countries of a curve. We assume that point H in the above figure maximizes the country's economic welfare with a given setup where the foreign countries of a curve OB rest in stability. But it is possible that the nation 2 of a curve may also shift its location from the original position of OB. Several factors which cause the displacement of the foreign curve are Technological progress could bring remarkable production expansion in the foreign country, which could shift the nation to offer curve to the left, such that this new offer curve could attain the point of tangency with nation 1 indifference curve U4. It would result in the superior point of economic welfare as compared to which was attained at point H. Retaliating tariff action by the nation 2 foreign country could likewise shift the offer curve of nation 2 to the right. So, the optimum tariff point for nation 1 can shift away from point H as the foreign country's offer curve shifts its position. Now, we will discuss optimum tariff formula. The exact level of optimum tariff can be calculated with the help of following formula. T is equal to 1 upon E minus 1, where E stands for the elasticity of the foreign country's offer curve and T stands for optimum tariff rate for the tariff imposing country. The magnitude of the optimum tariff depends upon the elasticity of the foreign offer curve. As long as the foreign country's offer curve elasticity is less than unity or equal to unity, the home country can impose or increase tariffs and thus can improve its terms of trade and increase its level of economic welfare. On the other hand, as the foreign country's offer curve has elasticity greater than unity, it will be better for the home country to reduce tariffs. The table proves 
that as the foreign offer curve elasticity coefficient becomes greater and greater than unity the optimum tariff rate that maximizes economic welfare will become lower and lower as the coefficient of elasticity of the foreign curve becomes less and less the optimum tariff rate will go on increasing so in other words if the foreign demand for the home country's product is inelastic the optimum tariff level will be higher and if it is elastic the optimum tariff rate will be lower now we will see the welfare effects of tariff to analyze the effects of tariff consider a market in a small importing country that faces an international world price of pf in free trade in figure the free trade equilibrium is shown at pf where the domestic demand is given by df domestic supply by sf and the imports by the difference of demand and supply df minus sf when a specific tariff is implemented by a small country it will raise the domestic price by the full value of tariff so with tariff the price now rises to pt and the tariff rate will be t which is equal to pt minus pf the table show the summary of the direction and magnitude of the welfare effects to producers consumers and the government in the importing country the tariff effects of small country are as below importing country consumers consumers of the product in the importing country are worse off as a result of the tariff the increase in the domestic price of both imported goods and the domestic substitutes reduces consumer surplus in the market the magnitude of the change in consumer surplus is shown as a plus b plus c plus d next importing country producers producers in the importing country are better off as a result of the tariff the increase in the price of their product increases producer surplus in the industry the price increase also induces an increase in the output of existing firms an increase in employment and an increase in profit next importing country government the government receives tariff revenue as a result of the tariff who will benefit from the tariff revenue will depend on how the government spends it these funds help in supporting the government programs next importing country the aggregate welfare effect is calculated by summing the gains and losses to consumers producers and the government the net effect consist of two components that is negative production efficiency loss as shown in area b in figure 2 and negative consumption efficiency loss as shown in area d these two losses are referred to a dead weight losses as there are the negative elements in the national welfare change the net national welfare effect of a tariff must be negative this implies that a tariff implemented by the small importing country must reduce the national welfare now we will take the large country case we here take that there are only two trading nations one importing and one exporting the supply and the demand curves for the two countries are shown in the figure pf is the free trade equilibrium price at this price the excess demand by the importing country equals excess supply by the exporting country when a large country implements a tariff on its imports the tariff will inhibit the flow of commodity across the border it will now cost more to move the product from exporting country to the importing country as a result supply of the commodity to the importing country will fall due to increase in price due to reduce supply of product to the large importer the price of the exporting nation will fall so this lower price will reduce the supply of the exporting country suppose after the tariff the price in the importing country rises to pt imports and the price in the exporting country falls to pt exports so the tariff would be t is equal to pt imports minus pt exports the tariff effects of a large country are importing country consumers consumers of the product in the importing country 
suffer a reduction in well-being as a result of tariff. The increase in the domestic price of both imported goods and the domestic substitutes reduces the amount of consumer surplus in the market. Importing country producers. As a result of tariff, there is increase in the well-being of the producers as shown by the area E plus F plus G plus H. The increase in the price of the product in the domestic market increases the producer surplus in the industry. The price increases also induces an increase in output of the existing firms, an increase in employment and an increase in profit. Importing country government. The government receives tariff revenue as a result of the tariff. Who benefits from the revenue depends on how the government spends it. Importing country. The aggregate welfare effects for the country is found by summing the gains and losses to consumers, producers and the government. The net effect of the three components are a positive term of trade effect G, a negative production distortion effect B and a negative consumption distortion D. As there are both positive and negative elements, the net national welfare effect can be either positive or negative. But generally, the tariff implemented by a large importing country may raise the national welfare. Exporting country consumers. Consumers of the products in the exporting country experience an increase in well-being as a result of the tariff. The decrease in the domestic prices raises the amount of consumer surplus. Area E. Exporting country producers. They suffer decrease in the well-being as a result of tariff. The decrease in the price of their product in their own country decrease the producer surplus. It also results in decrease in output, decrease in employment and decrease in profit. Exporting country government. There is no effect on the exporting country government as a result of the importer tariff. Exporting country. It is calculated by summing up the gains and losses to consumers and the producers. Since all the three components are negative, so the importer's tariff must result in a reduction in national welfare for the exporting country. The table provides a summary of the direction and magnitude of the welfare effects to producers, consumers and the government in the importing and exporting countries. Now let us summarize what we have learned in this module. As studied in this module, a country can maximize its level of economic welfare by optimizing rather than maximizing its terms of trade. So it is the point of optimum tariff which is achieved when the nation reaches a point of tangency between its own trade indifference curve and the foreign countries of a curve. Moreover, we analyzed in the welfare effects that whenever a small country imposes a tariff, the national welfare falls. And so higher the tariff is set, the larger will be the loss in the nation welfare. Whereas the welfare is increased when the small tariff is implemented by large country. However, everyone's welfare does not rise when there is an increase in national welfare. Instead, there is redistribution of income. Producers of the product and recipients of government spending will benefit, but the consumers will lose. A national welfare increases means that the sum of the gains exceeds the sum of the losses across the individuals in the economy.